Hey guys, and welcome to another Walk-In Wednesday. I have a very interesting uh, gun to show you today. In fact, take a look. Nothing in my hands. Uh, there's a point to this. <laughs> Shows how easy this is to hide, and that's part of the story. Um, this is a cap and ball uh, pistol uh, from the 1800s, about 1850, 1860, uh, made by Derringer in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Um, now, this came in on a uh, Wednesday, uh, walk-in Wednesday, that's why we have that, but we're also going to do a little bit of education. You can tell from my props behind me uh, that this turns out it was uh, a lot more than I expected. So, I really don't sell old flintlocks or uh, percussion guns. Uh, it's really outside my wheelhouse. Uh, but from time to time, people send them to us, and uh, this one in particular, honestly, I really didn't think much of it. I just didn't impress me at all. So I said, hey, throw it on Gunbroker for a dollar and uh, see what it brings. I figured it would bring around $200. Uh, but in fact, it brought uh, over $800, which surprised me. I couldn't figure out why until the guy who bought it contacted me when the auction was over and said, hey, I don't know if you know it, but that is very similar to the gun that shot Lincoln. Now, this is a picture of the actual gun that shot Lincoln. Um, and um, let's go over some of the detail on this gun. So uh, first and foremost, let's talk about the size of this gun because uh, mine is about four and three quarter inches and the uh, gun that shot uh, Lincoln is five and three quarter inches. If you look at the design, the engraving is very much the same. Uh, mine says Derringer Philadelphia, as does the uh, one that shot Lincoln. Um, his is about an inch bigger overall. Um, but like the PP versus the PPK, it's not just an extended barrel. The whole, the whole gun, the, the frame and the uh, barrel are just about an inch bigger overall. Um, mine comes in 41 caliber. And the one that shot Lincoln, depends on, depending on what you read, uh, it is either 44 or 45 caliber. So imagine a 44 or 45 caliber bullet coming out of a gun uh, this small made with wood. If you look at mine uh, close up, it may have been shot uh, a few times because there's cracks in the wood. Uh, my gun has the basic same engraving. It has a P proof on it, uh, same as the one uh, that shot Lincoln. Uh, it has checker, checkering on the grip uh, and that's, that's similar. You can see for takedown, and I guess to take the barrel off and take this gun apart, I would remove the screw but also pull this pin out. Similar to a Colt single action army, you can just pop this through, which I did. I decided not to take the gun apart because it really is an antique piece of history, again, from the uh, 1850s, 1860s. Uh, Lincoln, of course, was shot in 1865, so the gun was used then by John Wilkes Booth. I'll do a little more history uh, that happened at the assassination, just some interesting facts, uh, but let's do a little bit more about the gun. For the John Wilkes Booth gun, I don't have any close-ups of the underneath of it. Uh, the man who did buy this said he actually, m many years ago, went f to the Ford Theater. He commented that the uh, security was very lax, but he was able to go and see the gun. On the bottom, there is a pineapple design, and sure enough, you can see a pineapple on the bottom of mine. Now, pineapples, why pineapple? They were actually the fruit of the very wealthy back then, so this would be a sign of wealth to have uh, a pineapple on here, so it was uh, desirable that way. Also, you can see the little shield in the back, John Wilkes Booth gun uh, does have a shield on the back exactly like this, and it is blank. This one is blank. I would imagine you would order this from the factory, and if you so cho chose, you could put your initials on it, but I don't know that for sure. It just seems to make sense. On mine, you can barely see it, but on the John Wilkes Booth gun on top, it also says uh, Derringer of Philadelphia. Now, I do have to uh, claim some Philadelphia pride here. Uh, the Derringer made some uh, beautiful pistols uh, back in the 1800s uh, at the Philadelphia factory, and one of my props right here, you will see... Uh, Philadelphia Eagle, oops, <laughs> we'll try that again. You can see my uh, Philadelphia Eagle Super Bowl ring, um, and uh, this was from 2017. Now, this, uh, I dropped it on the floor, and I know some of you guys get on me about the way I treat the guns and this Super Bowl ring. This is not real. Uh, these are very cheap online, and my daughter, uh, I shouldn't say it's very cheap, and my daughter got it for me. 
These are inexpensive and my daughter got it for me. So a little bit of Philadelphia pride here. Now uh, back to the gun um, and I'll try not to drop this one. <laughs> That's why they don't let me handle uh, the, the, the Lincoln assassination gun. Um, oh, oh, John Wilkes Booth, have you ever noticed that uh, anybody who assassinated somebody, they give you three names? Martin Luther King was James Earl Ray. We know that Kennedy was shot by Lee Harvey Oswald and there are other examples, but certainly Lincoln was shot by John Wilkes Booth. I think I understand what that means because my mother, when I knew I was in huge trouble when my mother yelled out the door, Thomas Allen Whiteman, you get home right now. That meant trouble. So if you're an assassin, you get all three names. So I already admitted that I don't know a lot about these, but I know that these are cap and ball. Uh, we do have a demonstration of somebody shooting a similar gun, but basically this still works. The hammer comes back. The reason I stated I don't know a lot about these, because whenever I do something I don't know a lot about, I always have people who respectfully correct me. I always appreciate your comments, so please do. Uh, if I get something wrong, please respectfully uh, correct me. But then there's also those people who call me an idiot. I don't like that that much. So you put the cap on the nipple, and that is to ignite the powder. Powder goes in first, and then there's a cloth that goes in, and then the ball. I already mentioned this is 41 caliber. I can't imagine this little gun in my hand and I'm gonna shoot it. I can't imagine that it doesn't hurt. It reminds me of one of my favorite segments that we did of Ian shooting a Liberator. Uh, let's just take a little clip of that. And that's how John Wilkes Booth must have felt because in fact, after he shot Lincoln and he was only about three feet away from his head, shot Lincoln, he immediately dropped it on the floor. Um, and then somebody picked it up. Uh, the theater owner actually came back and picked it up later. Uh, but again, remember his is in 44 caliber or 45. Uh, the other prop I have back here um, is a uh, Walther Model 9. And you might say, what does a Walther Model 9 have to do with this? Um, I, just in comparison for size, I look at the size of the Walther 9, and this is in 25 caliber. Uh, this is in 41 caliber. Now this Model 9, I have shot them and, and they're just, you know, it's, it's, it's some kick for such a little lightweight gun. So I, I can only imagine what, it, I'm not going to shoot one. Uh, but let's take a look at somebody shooting what is supposed to be a replica. But if you look at the gun, you can clearly see that it's much cruder. Um, it's a modern reproduction and it's certainly larger than the John Wilkes Booth gun. So just watching that, and again, that seems to be a bigger pistol. Uh, you can imagine being at the, at the theater. It's a flash of light. Uh, there's a lot of smoke and powder and a very large uh, bang from a 45 caliber bullet. And uh, speaking of the size of the gun, uh, the other prop I have, and I'll give you a close-up of it. This is one of the more famous uh, depictions. Of course, there's no photographs, but there's several... Uh, there are several sketches that people did, uh, eyewitnesses and things like that, sketches. And you can see uh, in this one in particular, it almost looks like he's, he's holding a single action army Colt, a uh, commercial model, but a uh, single action army. We actually have a little clip of the curator of the uh, museum at Ford's Theater. That's where the gun is kept. And you can see him holding it, uh, similar to mine. It's a, very, it's a very small pistol. You can also see how John Wilkes Booth would just have slipped it in his pocket in a day and age before. Uh, metal detectors. Of course, if the president was at the theater, there would be all kinds of security. In this case, there wasn't. So let's take a look back. I want to do a little history of the assassination itself and some maybe some little known facts that I found interesting. Uh, there are books written about the assassination of Lincoln and just like any uh, presidential assassination, there's all kinds of conspiracy theories, including people who think that John Wilkes Booth was a vampire and that Lincoln was a vampire killer. So please spare me um, all the internet trolls, spare me all the conspiracy theories, and uh, again, respectful comments, welcome. Uh, but let me go over a, a few facts that I found really interesting. So the assassination plot itself, this all happened back in April of 1865. Uh, the war had just ended. And in fact, John Wilkes Booth uh, had, the original plot was he was going to save the South. He was, of course, a Southern uh, sympathizer. And he and a group of about seven uh, conspirators, along with Mary Surratt, who owned a boarding house, they had meetings at her boarding house where they plotted to kidnap the president, 
hold them for ransom in exchange for all the Confederate prisoners. Now, they were low on men and material, and so getting back um, all of the men that had been captured would have been a tremendous boost to the Confederate army. So that was the original plot. However, then the war ended, and it ended before they could carry out their plot. So with the war over, um, now John Wilkes Booth is really just angry, so he, con he decides to continue the plot, but this time to kill Lincoln along with several other people in high office. So among the list was um, the Vice President Johnson, also General Grant, along with Secretary of State William Seward. So one of the interesting facts that I, again, I just, m most of this I'm reminding myself and I'm probably just reminding you, but it's, it's cool stuff. Um, just days before the actual assassination, Lincoln had a dream, premonition of his own assassination. Um, and he dreamt that he, uh, there were mourners in the White House and he said, why is everybody so sad? They said, the president's been shot. He told a friend about that and it was recorded. So he did predict his own death just days before the assassination. So as most of you know, the night of April 14th, 1865, uh, um, Lincoln had decided to celebrate the uh, victory. He hadn't been out for a night on the town in a long time. Um, you know, just, it was a very serious time. He didn't get out much. And so he decided he wanted to go to the theater. He wanted to take Grant and his wife, but in fact, Mary Lincoln and Mrs. Grant, don't know her first name, but Mrs. Grant and Mary Lincoln did not get along. Um, now, I have uh, read in other books that um, Mary Lincoln was a little bit temperamental and not an easy woman, but uh, in this case, Grant begged out of the invitation. So instead, he in invited Major Rathbone and his girlfriend Clara to come along with him to Ford's Theater on that evening. They arrived late, and uh, this, uh, when they uh, came into the booth, the four of them came into the booth, um, they, stopped, uh, they stopped the play and everyone gave him a standing ovation, of course, as the president who had overseen uh, the victory over the Confederate Army. So John Wilkes Booth was an actor of the time and actually quite famous and they said recognizable when he visited bars and stuff, people recognized him and he was loved by the ladies, uh, considered a very handsome man. I personally don't get it, but um, uh, he was well known uh, by the public and at the theater because he had acted there many times. So he actually picked up his mail there and saw a billet that, um, uh, that the president was coming to the theater that night. And that's what uh, pulled the plan together. He thought, this is the perfect opportunity. He knows the theater really well. He has access to the, to the back door and could come in at the appropriate time, which he determined was 10 after 10. He knew the play very well. Our American Cousin was a comedy, and he knew the, the biggest laugh of the night would come right around, just a little after 10 p.m., after intermission, uh, toward the end of the play. So he met one more time with the other conspirators at Mary Surratt's uh, boarding house. And uh, there were seven of them total, and they each were given an assignment, some to help with the getaway. Uh, one person was to assassinate Johnson. Uh, that man in particular said later, I signed on for a kidnapping, not an assassination. So instead he went to a bar, uh, got pretty drunk and said some really incriminating things that uh, the bartender later remembered and used in testimony against him. Another conspirator was to kill Secretary of State Seward and he in fact did enter his home, uh, stabbed about five people, uh, servants and, and people who were in the home, went upstairs. Um, the Secretary of State was convalescing in his bed uh, he stabbed him a couple times and actually cut his throat, but he was, he was actually in a brace because he had been hurt in a carriage accident, and that brace uh, saved his life. He, uh, the conspirator left and assumed he was dead because he said there was blood all over the bed, but he in fact did survive the attack. So let's go back to John Wilkes Booth. Uh, the conspiracy was that they would all uh, stage their attacks at about 10 after 10. And so he went to a bar. I guess if you're gonna commit a murder, you probably should go to a bar and have a couple of drinks, and that's actually what he did. And coincidentally, um, Lincoln's bodyguard, I, I, I don't wanna laugh about this, but this is so comical. His regular bodyguard had the night off or was uh, um, indisposed, but they instead got uh, one of the uh, local police detectives off duty, paid him to be um, uh, Lincoln's bodyguard, when in fact he had something like 17 disciplinary actions against him. There was a door to the booth and he was to sit outside and guard the president to keep anybody from coming in. At intermission, he went to the bar 
and he sat there and had a few drinks and actually completely um, missed the, uh, the, the whole assassination. John Wilkes Booth, coincidentally, was in the exact same bar having a drink, waiting to go over, which he did. At about uh, 10 after 10, he headed across the street to Ford's Theater. John Wilkes Booth, who was, of course, known to everybody who worked at the theater, slipped in the back door. There was a guard there who let him in, thought there was nothing unusual. Uh, John Wilkes Booth was a frequent visitor at the theater. He uh, walked in with his little Derringer easily fitting in his pocket. Uh, he walked right into the booth. Um, it was the time of uh, a, a, the com comedic line when everybody, there was a lot of noise, so he was able to walk in the, the back of the booth uh, without being detected. And just um, about three feet from Lincoln's head, he pulled the trigger. Of course, you get one shot and you're done. He immediately dropped the gun and then he was going to jump out the booth and run across the stage. I think uh, as an actor, one final act, he wanted the uh, glory of running across the stage. But as he went toward the front of the booth, Major Rathborn grabbed him and tried to stop him. He grabbed his dagger and stabbed Rathborn. He was not seriously hurt. And then of course, as you know, he jumped, uh, jumped to the stage and he yelled, death to the tyrants and uh, ran off the stage. There were people who helped him with the getaway. We know he got across the bridge um, into Maryland, and um, he knew that area very well and probably knew Dr. Mudd, uh, Dr. Samuel Mudd. They went to his house and had his uh, leg treated and splinted, and they moved on from there. Uh, of course, the end of the story of, unless you're a conspiracy theorist, uh, end of the story, uh, he was caught uh, by Union soldiers at a barn. They burned the barn and shot him. Uh, the other conspirators were all rounded up very quickly, and almost all of them were hung, including Mary Surratt, was, who was the first woman to ever be executed uh, by the United States government. One conspirator uh, got away. He escaped um, to uh, Canada and years later ended up in Egypt, where he was apprehended in time. So all of the, most of the conspirators were hung. I believe there was about eight of them that were hung. Uh, and that included people who helped them escape. Uh, others were given life sentences. Dr. Mudd was given a life sentence. I actually made a movie about Dr. Mudd. And one more thing from my past. Um, I always heard the expression when I was in trouble, your name's going to be Mudd. And I believe, just like remember my sniper video, Blowing Smoke, uh, your name is going to be Mudd comes from Dr. Mudd was tried and sentenced to life in prison for treating John Wilkes Booth. However, many years later, uh, he was pardoned by the President of the United States at that time. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this quick overview of this Derringer, which I had no idea what it was until we sold it. Uh, it'll now go to the, the, the person who bought it. Thank you very much for bringing this to my attention and so that we could bring you this uh, video, a little bit of history and a little bit of gun knowledge. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe to our channel because we have a lot more interesting videos coming your way.